I think I'm gonna make a demon slayer doll now. Okay. Hey guys, what's up? I'm finally back from my holiday and also back from getting my deviated septum fixed. So if my face is a little stiff in this video, I apologize in advance because I'm still healing. But at least I can breathe now. <laughs> Today I'm gonna be finally making a Demon Slayer doll and I'm going to make one of my favorite characters, Shinobu. For this project I'm going to be customizing a mega tiny ball jointed doll that I received from Nina's dolls. She did such an incredible job in sculpting her, so let's unbox her right away, shall we? So here's the branded box from Nina Stouts. The golden lettering is so shiny, it looks just really really pretty. But let's open up the box. First we have the super cute acrylic charm. I'm actually in need of a new keychain, so this is fantastic. And here's an envelope with a little branding seal. Wow, that's so cool. I wanted to open the envelope satisfyingly, but then this happened. <laughs> Oops. No! <laughs> Let's see what we got. First, a sticker with an artwork of the doll. Nina was also so kind to send me some of these teeny tiny 6mm eyes because I did not have such a small eye mold. Here's another charm and it's just so gorgeous. I think I will hang this in my studio. And here are a photo card, care instructions and the certificate of authenticity. The doll is called Luna and I got her in a light skin tone. But now for the main event. She is safely wrapped in this cute pillow. Oh, it's so cute. It's like a little pillow. Oh my god, it's so tiny. It's, almost it's so small. And so light. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you probably heard that I was very surprised how small the doll actually is. I know she was tiny, but seeing her in real life was a whole other experience. The level of detail on this doll is basically the same as on larger dolls, which is absolutely astonishing. Her proportions are very realistic and I'm in love with the soft expression on Luna's face. She also came with these little beans that I can exchange for the hands while dressing her because she doesn't have magnetic hands. She also came with two additional hip joints and an additional lower torso piece. The entire doll is double jointed, which is incredible on this small scale. She can easily kneel and is a great, great poser. And to show you just how small this doll is, here she is next to a Spectra doll that I had laying around still. The body is similar in height, but the head is a fraction of the size of a Monster High doll. So painting her face is gonna be a huge challenge. The moment I saw this doll, she reminded me so much of Shinobu from Demon Slayer due to her soft expression and just in general very ethereal look. So I cannot wait to start customizing her. Thank you so much Nina's Dolls for sending me your precious doll. Make sure to check out her account. Her dolls are lovely and she is so talented and has still some of her BJDs in stock. Alright, but now let's get this spread by starting the jacket. I used a pattern for rainbow high dolls I altered from DG Requiem for the base of this jacket. I'm cutting out all the pattern pieces from black cotton fabric first, before cutting some vinyl designs for the jacket from white fabric vinyl. Once cut with the plotting machine, I can then proceed to weed out all the excess vinyl to reveal the prints. Okay, I put everything on and let's iron this. I iron the prints for about 20 seconds on the iron press and then peel off the transfer vinyl while it's still hot. Looking great! I then take the sleeves of the jackets and first glue around the bottom seam allowance with my uh -huh. glue stick. I do that on both sleeves and then take some small white stripes on which I already glued around one side and now glue them onto the bottom of the sleeves, creating this layered look for the jacket sleeves. Then I just snip off the excess and repeat it on the other sleeve. I also have to prepare the collar, so I just simply glue around the top and side seam allowances with my Uho glue as well, trying to make it as neat as possible. Once done, it looks like this. Nice! Now I can take the bodice of the jacket and first will attach the sleeves to it, finished sides in. And then I take my collar piece and will place the center backs together good sides in and sew it on so hopefully it will look something like this. Once that was successfully acquired, I can then fold together the sleeve and side seams, neat sides inwards and then try to sew these tiny seams. I usually place some paper underneath the pattern piece when jamming it through my sewing machine to prevent the machine from devouring the hard work of a foresighted artist. 
After the seam has successfully been sewn, I can then just rip off the paper and have a super neat seam. Easy but effective trick. Alright, at this point I just wanted to try on the jacket on the doll to see how it would look like. And I realized with agony that I apparently effed up the pattern alteration. No, it's too small! No! No! At this point I was very upset that life threw such lemons at me. When life gives you lemons and nothing is working the way you want to, sometimes it's just best to take a step back. A great way for me to calm down is by playing Merch Gardens. It's a fun casual game where you build your own garden and fill it up with trees, birds, butterflies and so many cute creatures and plants. I love that the game combines organizing your garden by merging different types of flowers, trees, eggs and animals and you can also play a puzzle game to get more items. Am I constantly playing the game while having a free minute or taking a break? Maybe, but it's so much fun and it's so so easy to just pick it up and play for a bit. Like look at all these little animals and how they collect nectar, it's so cute! And there are so many things to discover and merge and unlock. My personal favorite animal is the big monarch butterfly, it is just so adorable. Also in general I'm a huge fan of puzzle games, so getting rewards for the past levels is just so satisfying. It feels like you're actually progressing, not like in real life sometimes. <laughs> So if you feel like you need to take a little break as well and this game sounds right up your alley, you can use this QR code to directly download the game and start playing. Or you can use the link down in the description box below to start playing the game entirely for free. Thank you so much Merch Gardens for sponsoring this video and now let's try to play the puzzle game in real life and see if we can get some rewards too. <laughs> Okay, so after taking a small breather I ended up making the complete jacket again and this time it did fit. <laughs> I already added some snap buttons as closures, glued around the bottom seam allowance and now just have to add the signature golden buttons to it. I simply use my Uhu glue to attach the half beads to the jacket and add four in total. In the end there were just some glue residue stains that I removed afterwards with acetone and with that we have a really pretty and cool jacket. Finally! <laughs> Sometimes you just have to make things twice to get it right, but this way I am way more satisfied with the result. <laughs> okay, let's make her some punt. I realized that rainbow high pants fit her, so I altered the pattern from DG Requiem as well and will first sew together the front crotch seam finished sides in. After that was done and nicely ironed, I then placed the back parts of the pants along the side seams and also sew these together good sides in. I like to set my sewing machine stitch length to 2 or 1.8 for small doll garments. Also placing the needles horizontally lets me just sew over them and keeps everything in place. I just steamed the pieces into oblivion to iron the seams nice and flat and can now proceed to add a waistband. I came prepared for recording and already cleaned up the top of the waistband and will now just place it on top of the pants and slap it on finished sides in. One smooth transition later it is on and I will now take some teeny tiny fabric straps for the belt loops and attach them with a tiny bit of glue to the waistband before sewing them on. This way they stay in place and don't just fly everywhere while I'm trying to sew them. Great! Now using my Uhu glue stick again I'm cleaning up the bottom seam allowance of the pants by gluing them around. I do that to both leg pieces and can then fold the pants together and sew that tiny little back seam right there. And now I just have to fold the pants like this and sew together the seam from one leg all the way to the other. And with a little belt I made from a white fabric stripe and a small buckle and a closure in the back the pants have successfully been created. I'm super happy how realistic they look, literally a miniature version of real pants. Now for my favorite part of this whole doll, the butterfly haori jacket. For that I actually prepared some gradient prints and the butterfly lines that I will first be cutting out from black fabric vinyl. When they were cut I have to use all of my patience and then knife to weed out all the excess material that is not needed. It is however oddly satisfying to do that because it reveals the actual print. When I was done it looked like this. I have a bodice, the two sleeves and some small parts for the collar. Okay, so 
I printed out these gradients already onto fabric vinyl for the Haori jacket. And here are the wing patterns that I will put on top of it. And here are the pattern pieces. So I'm gonna cut these out now and then we will iron everything together. Let's do that. Once the gradient pieces were roughly cut out, I placed them upside down on the fabric and will iron them on for 20 seconds at about 190 degrees Celsius. I then peel off the transfer paper while it's still super hot, which is always a hot matter, I might say. After that, I can then place the black lines on top of the gradient pieces and iron them on for 20 seconds at about 165 degrees Celsius. I peel off the vinyl and end up with a beautiful printed piece. Now I just do that to the other pieces as well and then we can start assembling the jacket. First, I'm taking the sleeve pieces and will clean up the seam allowance on the curved part like this. To make sure it sticks nice and secure, I will be using my seam tape again. Cut it into thin stripes and first iron these stripes on the seam allowance. And then I can fold them around and melt the fabric together forever and never to part. This was indeed pretty finicky, but it does look really nice in the end. When I was done with the sleeves, I then take the bodice piece and will now sew on the sleeves. I marked where to place the sleeves with little notches and will just sew them on good sides in like this. Ah yes, it starts to look like a jacket! Now I just have to fold the sleeves and side seams together, printed sides inwards. To not make any needle holes into the fabric, I simply use some small fabric clips and will now sew the seam lines like this, leaving about 3 cm open right under the armhole to be able to flip the jacket inside out. Now just the collar is missing and for this one I first need to sew the bottom seam together so I can flip it around for a neat finish. I fold it like this and sew it here. Then I take the jacket and the collar piece and can now attach the collar. I pin it starting in the middle of the jacket finished sides in and leave some seam allowance on the jacket piece. I then just sew it on and iron the bottom seam allowance of the jacket with seam tape as well and the Haori jacket is done! I'm so proud that it turned out this nice. The gradients look perfect and the black vinyl print makes the lines look nice and sharp. Now for Shinobu's shoes. She actually wears tabbies, which were impossible to do on the doll, so let's try to fake them. For the black sock, I actually did make her some black socks from jersey fabric and first do around the top seam allowance. After that, I then just sew them together along the back seam and turn them inside out. Awesome! Now for the rest of the shoe, I actually put them onto the doll feet first and then take some purple embroidery thread to make the fake tabbies. I glue them onto the sock and wrap them in shape of a flip-flop along the sock. Since the doll feet were super duper tiny, it was really difficult to do, but eventually I ended up with a shoe like this. Now I just need to repeat the same on the other foot. For the shoe soles, I cut out the shape from white fun foam. The edges were a bit rough, but no worries, they're easy to fix with a lighter. I just carefully heat the edges and smooth them out. Looking much better, except the pencil marks, but they won't be visible in the end, trust me. <laughs> then using the almighty power of the Uhu Alles Cleaver, I spread it onto the sole and glue it on the bottom of the sock. And with that, we have some teeny tiny fake tabby shoes. They look a bit wonky when they're not on the doll feet, but trust me, they look great. <laughs> Oh, and I also made her some leg warmers with the same technique as the jacket and basically just sewed some leg tubes. Now we can finally make the wig. Okay, so I do have some hair here that I'm now going to try to dye with a black to purple gradient. Let's see, I will use this um, dark purple and some black hair dye that I'm mixed. Let's see if I can make this work. Hair dyeing is really not my strength, but I want to get better at it, so it was a good way to practice. I first apply the purple and then carefully the black, trying to blend it nicely. Okay, this has to sit now for at least half an hour. And then we'll wash it off and see if it looks good. Mm. When the hair dye is applied to the soaked hair, it always looks so nice. I really hope it's gonna look decent in the end. Now we just have to wait. <laughs> So this actually turned out 
really really nice and I already made the wefts now and we kept this also done and yeah we can start making the wig now. I'm super happy that the hair did turn out nice eventually. I glue the wig by first gluing one big circle along the back of the head so I can wrap all those hairs together in a hair bun later. I glue the hair all the way around the circle shape in the same direction. For more density, I add another layer so we will have enough hair. And then I use some styling products and a toothbrush, comb the hair in place nicely and then tied it together. Sadly, my can decided not to record this part, so I'm very sorry for that. And now we can finally add the gradient wefts to the front of the hair. I basically just fill up the whole front section with them, style them with my hair iron and try to create a nice middle part. And here is the finished wig. This has to be one of the smallest wigs I've ever made, which made it incredibly hard to create. I didn't need much hair, but I needed just as much time to make this wig than a bigger one. But hold up, one thing is missing, Shino was big butterfly. To make that, I created a graphic in Adobe Illustrator and printed it onto a clear vinyl sheet. For the purple outlines, I then cut the shapes out of self-adhesive vinyl using my dad's Cricut. Then I weed them out. And yes, I made a couple more just in case I would mess up. <laughs> For the actual butterfly, I will just need two vinyl butterflies though, so I proceed with the insanely finicky weeding of the inner shape of those two. These tiny circles were something else to remove. <laughs> After eternity I did it though and will now place the transfer vinyl on top of the butterflies and rub it on firmly. Now I can take the printed butterfly and one of the purple vinyl outlines, peel off the vinyl butterfly and then add some water to both pieces. The water helps the pieces to be still a bit shiftable so I can place them on top of the print as precise as possible. I then rub out as much water as I can with my fingers and remove it from the work surface. This needs to dry now. A couple hours later, the butterfly piece is dry and I can now very carefully remove the transfer vinyl. This was so incredibly satisfying to do. Now I just have to repeat the step on the other side of the butterfly as well and then I can finally use my small little embroidery scissors to cut out the butterfly from clear vinyl. I did it as neat as I could but the whole butterfly is just around 1.5 inches small so it took quite a while to do so. When I was finally done with the butterfly, I can now add it to the wig. I realized that because of the hair bun, I actually had to cut away the body of the butterfly. So I ended up with two wings that I can now glue onto each side of the hair bun using my Uhu glue. I spread a small amount on it and slide it underneath the hair bun. It's so pretty, oh my god. Okay, as a true demon slayer, Shinobu of course needs her katana, right? I found a 3D file on cults and Blue Pixie was so nice to merge it together for me so I can print it in resin. Since the doll is so tiny, the katana is also incredibly small, so I really hope I can paint it neatly. I'm starting off by painting the orange parts of the sword. I'm using one of the smallest brushes I have and try my best to be exact. I also used a big magnifying glass to have more control as my eyes are sadly not getting better the older I get. RIP. <laughs> After the orange red parts were done, I then continue with the dark green parts on the handle. Luckily, I could paint over any overdrawn parts as the green covered the orange. On the blade, I use my liquid silver paint to fill in the kanji and the lower part of the blade. And then I use some gold paint on the bottom of the blade. Last but not least, there is only the black paint missing on the rest of the blade. I'm using my matte black acrylic paint for that. And after letting it dry, it looks like this and I'm actually very pleased with the outcome. It took me way longer than I thought to paint, but it was worth it. All right, now it's just face and eyes left. Let's start with the eyes. I'm taking two of the tiny six millimeter eye bases and put them onto some masking tape for easier handling. Since Shinobu has purple eyes, I will be using my Posca marker in lilac to dab on some color into the eyes before using my detail brush and spread the paint. After they were dried, they looked like this and since Shinobu doesn't have any kind of visible pupils, I then just use a toothpick and tiny drops of clear UV resin to fill up the eyes, doming them carefully before putting them under the UV lamp and curing them for two minutes. 
And this is how the finished eyes look like. And they look even prettier than I thought. Wow. All right, last but not least, let's paint Shinobu's face. I already sprayed the face with Mr. Super Clear and first spread some micro glitter on the face to give it some glow. Then, using the smallest amount of pastel chalk dust, I add blushing to the face. My brush looks so big because the face is so small, but since it's very soft, it actually worked quite nice. I did not dare to use any pencils on her, so I went with some grey gouache paint and my detail brush right away to paint her eyeliner. It actually worked quite well. Unfortunately, my camera had trouble focusing on a lot of parts of the face up since the head was just so tiny. That's why you only see me painting the last few lower lashes because the rest of the footage was sadly unusable. Painting the eyebrows was also not in focus at all because my camera liked the pencil way more apparently. But at least here you can see me filling up the eyeliner with black acrylic paint in all crispiness. It was so satisfying to fill it in with black. Last minute I also decided to give her some pearly purple eyeshadow. I just mixed matte acrylic varnish and purple mica powder for that and carefully brush it on. And then I can use one of my favorite micro glitters to add some highlighter to her face. And for the final touch I'm glossing her teeny tiny lips and lower waterline with Liquitex high gloss varnish. I apply three layers to the lips and two to the waterline. With that the face up is done, so let's see how she looks with the eyes inserted. Inserting the eyes always really gives the doll life. Sadly, I had no lashes that I could add to such a small doll, but I think she just looks absolutely perfect this way. And with that, I can finally put her together. Let's see how she looks like, shall we? small shinobu doll. I'm actually super proud that I was able to make her this detailed in such a small scale. I really feel she resembles Shinobu's soft character. Who's your favorite Demon Slayer character? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you to all my patrons for the incredible support throughout the years. You guys are true chats. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next video where I will be making a super special famous mouse and have a beautiful creative day.